Project Home DIY. I'm excited to get started with you with January 2020's first box. So let's get started and open our box. Yay, Happy New Year! With this year, we are trying some different kind of filling in our boxes. And as you can see, you get this fun stuff. Make sure to reuse it in another gift and pass it on. All right, so everything we need for this month's project is in our box. Um, it includes three wood blocks, a tin can, a white snowflake snowy spray, a pine cone pine spray, hmm, some snow, we have black paint and ivory, some burlap, some jute, a squirt bottle, and got kind of dusty, a snowflake pattern vinyl paper. And then if you are new to Project Home, you will receive the starter kit, which is your hot glue gun, sanding block, and your paintbrush. You will need all three of these items for this month's project. You won't always need them, but make sure that you have them for in the future as well. So make sure you also plug in your hot glue gun for today because we will be using it. So grab those items and let's get started. So the first thing, let's see. We have a couple different steps in we're going to go in. So we'll do... Um, the blocks first because they need to dry and then we'll work on the can but we'll start with the blocks so you have two three and a half inch by three and a half inch blocks and one uh, five and a half inch by five and a half inch block we are going to paint these and then put the snowflake on them and then paint the snowflake on them and remove the vinyl there are a couple different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you both ways because a lot of times with our Project Home DIY, my goal is to teach you how to do these things so you're able to apply them later on. So when you receive a vinyl stencil like this, sometimes there's a piece of transfer tape over it, which allows you to easily pull the whole entire image, especially with wording, all at once, put it on the surface, peel that transfer tape off, and the sticker will stay. Um, but this case, I did not include transfer tape because they're snowflakes and there's just one piece that you have to peel off. So they work really well independently without the transfer tape. So, but when you do get these vinyl stickers, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So let me explain what I mean by that. We're going to be using the black and the ivory paint to do our blocks. You may want a black snowflake on an ivory block, or you can do a black block and an ivory snowflake or you can do a couple of each that's totally up to you but the way the procedure in which you do that will vary so one way is we'll cut out the stencil itself so I'm going to use one of the three and a half inch stencils on here and then let's see I'm going to use the big one and do the stencil a different way. Okay, so, oh, I'm gonna cut out one more while I'm at it. I gave you a few extras, so you can kind of play around, see which one you like the best, and um, go from there. But I wanted to give you a few options and vary everybody's projects. So, to start, if you want your, um, there's two different ways, again, how to do this. So, first, you can either paint the whole block the final color, and then you would take the stencil like this. So say your whole block is gonna be ivory, then you take the stencil like this and put this on the block and then paint black and peel this off. That's one way. The other way is to take the stencil and very carefully take the inverse the inside part that we peeled out from there 
And these are, this is going to be kind of hard and tricky here because you don't want to lose any of those little snowflake pieces. That's why when transfer tape is kind of handy when you do this part, but if you just take your time, it'll be fine. And once you get at a certain angle where you're not pulling against, it will come right off. Okay, so then you can take this and then the second way to apply this would be if we wanted a black snowflake, we would paint this black, put this over the black, paint the whole block ivory, and then peel this out, okay? So that is the two different ways that I'm going to show you. I'm gonna just put this back on here temporarily. Actually, I'm gonna set it over here. And I'm gonna put this guy back on here temporarily. And I will show you how to do both of those techniques. And then my big one, we'll do it one way. Okay, so I'm gonna take my black paint and put a little on there. And so this way, I'm going to paint just the surface that will have a black snowflake. So I don't need to worry about the sides. I don't need to worry about anything else besides the top surface that will have the snowflake on it. Just that. Okay. So paint that. Or you can watch this whole thing and see how we do it completely and then decide how you want to paint. And then I'm going to take the ivory. and paint the whole block the final color, okay? And then we'll take the in the outside part and paint this snowflake black. So this whole block is gonna be ivory. When you're painting your blocks like this, you'll notice that on the ends, um, if you have a, a cut end on the where the grain is showing, you can hold right there and your paint will stick just because the paint gets into the grain really well. And so it's easy to be able to paint all sides of the block at one time if you hold on that grain. Before you also begin, I should have said this, um, but my blocks were nice and smooth. If your blocks have any wood splinters on them, use your sanding block and sand those edges off first. Okay, so I did paint one full coat of ivory on that whole thing and I held it on the sides and you can kind of see a little bit of the green showing through. Just touch that up and then set it up on a surface where you can set it at an angle and it can dry from all sides. So just set it right up against something where it can dry nicely. And we will go ahead and let those dry and then we'll apply the stencil. I'm going to paint this block as well. And I'm actually gonna paint my big one. I'm gonna paint it all black and but before I do that, I am going to sand the edges just a tiny bit. Okay, now I can paint the whole block black. And you will notice I do paint in my nice clothes. This isn't just for a video, but I usually don't change clothes to paint. And I do paint every day because that's what we do for a living. We do have a custom home decor business. So I make wood signs and a lot of custom home decor. And so I don't always change, but <clears throat> I have a trick that if you always paint your paintbrush away from you, you're not gonna splash on you. So if you pull your paintbrush towards you, the bristles are gonna flicker and they're going to um, 
get paint on you, but see I'm painting away from myself and so I won't splash on me. And then I'll change my clothes, but sometimes I still do ruin my clothes. And this block was a little bigger for me to be able to hold by my hand, so I did set it down on the table. But there it is fully painted. I'm just gonna set it up against that can and let it dry. Okay, so I'm gonna let all those dry, clean up, and I'll be back with some dry blocks so you can go ahead and paint yours. All right, I have my three blocks here and we're gonna let, they're all dry. So let's take um, this black one first and I'm going to take the sanding pad and just sand a little bit over what you just painted. When you paint, it does bring up the wood grain. So you want these blocks as smooth as possible when you put the vinyl on them. So do that on all three blocks. So again, we're doing two different methods here using the inverse and outside stencil. Um, these blocks will actually end up looking the same. They're just done two different ways. We did the black first and this will be a black snowflake on an ivory block. And here we did the ivory first and this will be a black snowflake on an ivory block. So same thing, but just two different ways of using both the inside of the stencil and the outside. That's why I did give you both, just so you'd have that option. So on your black one, if you chose to do it that way, you're gonna take the inverse of the stencil and stick it on the black paint. That will cover up that black area and keep it black when you paint over with the ivory. So there's my black snowflake. Really, these are snowflakes. Um, they look good any way that they are. Just kind of make sure they're centered, set nicely, press it down nicely, try not to roll up any of the edges. Okay, that one looks good. And then I'm gonna sand, I didn't sand the edges on this one first, but I'm gonna sand it just a little bit. I will be putting my final ivory coat on it. Okay, so there's that. And then take the outside part of the stencil and again pull all the way around. Kind of be gentle pulling this off so you don't wreck it or lose any of the pieces. They will be one full piece, but you can fold them in half on accident. That's why I did give you extras too, just in case. Okay, I'm gonna place that guy. And I kind of don't want mine to be straight on there, just because if it, if it isn't perfectly straight, you're gonna be able to notice. And so if you don't purposely paint, put it down perfectly straight, it won't look like it's off. Okay, so I kind of offset him just a little, but snowflakes are perfectly imperfect. You can make them however you want. Okay, so that guy's on there. And remember, so this block is completely finished on the outside. I'm gonna paint this black. I'm gonna paint this whole entire thing ivory. And for this one, I'm just putting the big stencil on and painting ivory and then you'll have an extra snowflake sticker that you can maybe do some other projects with oh these get a little touchy okay You can just get them to lay flat then you'll be able to see 
how you want them placed on there. There we go. So again, I kind of like them so it's off center just a little bit, crooked, if you will. Okay, I like that. All right, make sure everything is sealed down nicely. If not, you'll have a lump. And in the center of this snowflake, there is an inside piece. I'm just pulling that little guy out. There was all these pieces, but pull them out. So then this one will be ivory. Uh, a little tip to make it a little bit easier if your stencils are close to the edges like some of these are, you can take masking tape and tape over where the block is. Um, if you do get paint on there, just wipe it off with water quickly before it dries and then you should be fine. So I'm going to paint first this guy black. Okay, and I did notice I did get a tiny bit of black right here that I can just wipe it off. And then if it's still there when I pull off my stencil, then I can repaint over with the ivory and fix that little tiny bit. I'm gonna put this in the heater and dry. I'm gonna set it there for right now. Okay, I'm done with my black because these are both already, the black's done on this and the black's done on this. And, but they do need ivory. So I will open this the right way and squirt it out this time. Okay, paint this guy ivory. Okay, that one's done. Okay, and last one is the inverse one. So this one gets all ivory around the whole block. So that's painted all the way around. I'm going to set these in the dryer and when I get back, we can peel them. But in the meantime, while these are drying for you guys, let's go ahead and get the can out and we'll start that part. All right, so our blocks are drying and let's get started with the can. So you have your tin can and we need the burlap, pine, the white snowy brush, your bottle, the jute, and the flocking dust. Okay, so the first thing let's do is let's go ahead and spread out your pine cone just a little bit. Um, just stretch everything out from packing. They kind of get packed up in there, so just stretch it out a little. Um, and then we are going to flock or make it white, which this year in Christmas and this year, 2019, flocking is a big thing, um, changing your Christmas trees white. So I really wanted to show you this technique because maybe it's something that you wanna do in the future. Maybe you have a wreath that you wanna flock or your entire Christmas tree next year you wanna turn white. Totally up to you, but it's actually pretty easy. 
Um, I do recommend doing this in a place that you can get dirty. This blocking dust is not very clean um, or outside if you can. But take your spray, your water bottle that you received and fill it with water. Make sure that it is ready to spray. And once you have your pine cones all spread out nicely, go ahead and spray it generously with water so it's nice and misted. And this is actually super easy. I had no idea until I learned how to do it. And then I was able to do it. But So take your flocking dust, which you have plenty in there, and just kind of spread it around. And then tap it off, get the extra off. And you can do however much or little as you want. I'm gonna do just a tad more. If you really like the look, do lots. You can also take, if you have a sifter, an old kitchen sifter, you'll put the flocking dust in it and sift it on and that'll leave it a little more dusty. Um, totally up to you, but there it is. And then do give it one last spray, just a nice coat because there is a glue in this flocking dust that will make that stuff adhere to the pine cones and pine tree. So there it is, all finished. And then we're gonna set that aside, let it dry. And again, you have lots. So if there is a wreath or something else you wanna flock, you have lots to do that with. You can also probably add some of it to your um, blocks, or you can add it on the outside of your can or something cool. So once you have that going, let it dry. You can even set this in the heater if that's something available to you. Um, one thing I do recommend in all my videos when we have paint drying or something drying, get just a little space heater that you can safely put stuff in front of it to let stuff dry quicker. Um, I'm very impatient. I like to wait, so I like to do that. All right, so you'll have a tin can and the burlap, and we're going to wrap the burlap around. And the tin can may be taller than your burlap. So what I'm going to do first is just fold that under and tack it with glue, and then it'll be the right height for my can. So remember to make sure you have your hot glue gun plugged in, and just fold that over. And careful, don't put your finger right on the hot glue right yet. But if you do, make sure you lick your finger first and then it won't stick and be hot. And just put a touch because you don't want the hot glue to be seen from the front. My hot glue cord is really short. Okay, that was just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put, there will be still some glue on the can, so I'm gonna use that as my seam and glue right on that. So I'll start the burlap there on that seam and then work it around. Again, be really careful not to burn your fingers because the hot glue gun does come through the burlap really easily. So just carefully tap it. If you feel like you need more hot glue in places, just lift it up a little, stick some in there. There we go. That feels good. Maybe there's some stragglers, cut those off. Just again, be really careful hot gluing that because you can definitely burn yourself. But we want to make sure the can is covered. So 
that looks pretty good to me. Just to add a little touch to it, we can take the jute off your card and tie a bow around it. Okay. Or you can just go like this and give it a, like that, which I think I might do. Again, if you touch the hot glue, lick your finger first and then put it on it and it won't stick to it. Okay, there, that gave it a little bit of dimension. I like that. If you're good at tying bows, you can do a bow. You can do whatever you would like on that can. I'm going to add one at the bottom. And sometimes the strings don't go the way you want them to go, but they'll go anywhere you want them to go when you hot glue them down. So that's what you can do with these. Just hot glue them wherever you want them to stay. Okay, there's the pan. Let's see. Not quite dry yet. I'm going to put this in the heater and I actually want to put a little bit more flocking dust on it. Get it nice and snowy. Okay. All right, there's that. And then I'm going to go dry this and I'll be right back. So let your stuff dry. We'll check on the blocks and see if those are ready. Okay, the blocks were all ready. So nice thing about that heater is it does dry quickly when you do have that. So it's good to use it. Okay, here's the first big one. And we're just gonna pull off the stencil. And there's our first snowflake. Looks so perfect. Here's the second one, same technique. If you happen to peel off um, a piece of, or a grain of wood and a piece of wood shows through, just repaint it, just touch that up. Um, sometimes that happens when you're using a sticker and you peel across the wood. That can happen. There's two of them. And then this is the third one. And remember this one, we painted black first, put the stencil on and then peeled off or then painted the ivory. So it's just a little different peeling technique and you just have to pick on those edges and pull them up. Pick and pull. So just peel those out. Just like that. So these two blocks were done two different ways, but they turned out identical. Same, same difference with black snowflake ivory block, just done two different techniques with this stencil. So technically you could use um, one stencil, the inside and the outside, to do two different blocks. So you can be really economical with these and you could actually make 10 blocks if you were really good and didn't mess any of them up. So once you have your blocks done, take the sanding block and sand the edges if you would like. Um, you may not like a br the brush stroke, the paint brush stroke, or a worn look on your blocks and that's okay. You don't have to sand and do this part but a lot of people with the burlap look and that rustic kind of wintry look, the um, sanding just adds a little bit more worn look to it. So just sand the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and sand all these, all this and this part. The one cool thing about the block that we did, the black first, 
is the black will start to show through on the edges. So you will be able to see the difference um, in that technique. So you can kind of see what you do like better. Somebody, if you were to give this as a gift or if it's displayed at your home, nobody else is going to be able to tell the difference, but it's just kind of your personal preference. If you like that rustic black look to show through, then do your stencil color first and then paint your final color last. So go ahead and sand and make them look however rustic you want. three blocks sanded and as I said before you can tell on the one that we painted black first the black shows through when you sand and it doesn't on the one that we don't have the black background first I kind of prefer this look but when you do your black over the wood grain the wood grain is the white or the lighter color that pulls through so this almost looks like the same technique but really this isn't so just kind of learning what style you like better. Um, you can do next time something differently or next project you'll be able to um, know how, exactly how to do it and which way you like better. So on these blocks, just to spice them up a little bit, I'm going to put just a few rounds of jute just kind of across the top like so. So I'm gonna put a little glue here to hold that. Too much. I don't want to cover up a bunch of the snowflake, but just enough to give it a little touch and to tie it in with the tin, with the can. See, that adds just a tiny bit to it, but there's the back. So I just put them back in the same hot glue gun pile so they all kind of stick right there together. There's that one. You can also switch it size, whatever you'd like to do. There we go. So there's that one. I think I might put maybe just across the corner on the top. I'll do just a tiny bit. Gonna be a little more difficult staying on the corner but just put some hot glue gun tacks right here on the sides and I suggest putting it underneath them so then you'll be able to see them underneath the string this guy just plain. 
clean. So there's the three blocks and then let's finish our can and I'm gonna go get the flocked pine cones. Okay, nice and dry. Here it is. You might have to bend this stem just a little bit depending on the can that you have. You can fit that in there however you like. And then take your white branch and stick it in. And it is, there is metal in it, so it will bend. You might bend it just a tad bit to get it to stand however you like. And there is your January project. Can't wait to see your finished projects on Project Home DIY's sub subscriber Facebook page only. If you would like to um, join that group, find our Project Home DIY subscribers only page and I will accept your friend request anytime you come to us and share your projects. So can't wait to work with you in the future and see you next month. Thanks, bye.